Well, if you have your Bibles, we're going to speak this morning from the book of Hebrews. And I just know I've forgotten people. My wife's pointing at Brother Cassidy, but I did already mention that, Sister Plank. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It's funny, you all remember when we were young, now you're watching us while we're old. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, would you stand with us please for the reading of God's word. Isn't God good? It's a privilege to serve him. Thank the Lord for his presence we've sensed in the service this morning. I believe he wants to help us even yet in this service and then in the service tonight. Hebrews chapter 12, beginning to read at verse 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. The... Athlete on game day is the picture of skill and ability, but you don't see the pictures of him training day in and day out. Careful diet and exercise and practice for the big moment. The musician playing beautifully with precision and focus, but you don't see the grueling hours of practice and behind the scenes time and effort to reach perfection. And the same with the writer of books and the scientist who makes a discovery and the soldier who wins the battle. For each, there is something on the inside and behind the scenes. And when no one is looking, that's what propels them to be the success and example that we all admire. And nothing can make up for a weakness on the inside. Nothing can make up for what happens when no one else is looking. Whoever you are in the dark, if it's not what it's supposed to be. Whoever you are when you are alone, if it's not what it's supposed to be. Whatever you achieve uh, when no one else is there, that you, nothing will make up for what is really you. And not one of us, and this isn't real encouraging, but none of us have what it takes. You may be the athlete, you may be the painter, you may be the scientist, but if you want to serve Jesus, make a difference with your life and get to heaven when you breathe your last. And if you want to have in your last chapter these words written, well done, thou good and faithful servant, then you will need something on the inside that you don't have. You will need the fuel and the power of the Holy Spirit. We have read today from the book of Hebrews. Obviously, these people to whom this letter is written are intelligent people, well written to Hebrew Christians who were no fools. These people were blessed with first class teachers and top rated opportunities. You can read about that in Hebrews chapter two. Hebrews chapter two verses three and four talks about if the word was spoken by angels but was received, um, how should we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Chapter two verse three, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. They, um, they were blessed to have heard the gospel. They were saved people. They knew what it was to be born again. They had started well. They were people who were serious about being a Christian, so much so that they had struggled through abuse, robbery, chapter 10, imprisonment. These were brave people. Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verses uh, 32 to 34 you will read, uh, call to remembrance the former days. You endured a great fight of afflictions. Uh, you were made a gazing stock. Um, you, um, we're talking about people in prison. Uh, we're talking about people that were serious about being a Christian. But despite all this, the divine writer had some serious concerns. In chapter 2 of Hebrews, in chapter 2 of Hebrews, in the first verse, uh, we read a concern that they would not drift away. Chapter 2, verse 1, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. It's just a constant danger as we 
walk through life that we don't let slip the most important things out of our life. You won't have to fight for money. You won't have to fight for friends. You won't have to fight for entertainment in today's world, really. But you will have to fight to maintain the spiritual. Uh, chapter 10 of Hebrews, verse 39. Not only was he concerned that they not drift away, but they, he was concerned that they did not draw back. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 39. Now the... Uh, uh, Verse 38, now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Um, in chapter 4 of Hebrews, verses 1 and 2, he was concerned that they not slip back to unbelief. Um, unto you, the gospel has been preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. And he says in verse 1, Lest us, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. They needed something on the inside to help them walk day by day, the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. And education was not enough. And activity was not enough. And work and family and friends, all of this they no doubt had, but what they most needed was the Holy Ghost. And in this scripture today is a sermon for all of us. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Number one in this sermon is in verse 12. Do something, lift up the hands which hang down. Lift up the hands that are weak. Hands are a symbol of strength. There has to be a decision in your heart to go God's direction. And if you'll make that decision, the Holy Ghost will come alongside and inside you to make it possible. I think of Noah. He was asked to do an impossible task. Nowhere does it indicate that Noah went to shipbuilding school. But God gave him something he didn't have to build an ark to save his family. Mom and dad, your kids are starting the school another year, and uh, it's, it's pretty, um, you know, it, it, there's a lot of misgivings about, we want our children to make it. We want our children to make it, and it seems like it's harder than ever to, um, to raise our kids for God, and this world is no friend of grace, and you'll hear older folks say, I'm so glad my kids are raised. That's what they say. Well, I say that to yourself because it's not an encouragement to all of the parents who are here today. I think I saw maybe about a dozen little babies have been born this year at the Beavertown Church. Those parents need to know the truth of God's word, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever and if you'll give God first place in your life and let the Holy Ghost infill you, you can raise your kids to serve God in this day. Amen. What they needed most was the Holy Ghost. What you need the most is the Holy Ghost. God wants to give you something you don't have to build an ark to save your kids. Uh, I think of um, Gideon. And when we first read of him, he's hiding, he's inactive, he's complaining. But God gave him something he didn't have to raise an army and win a battle. You may be here today, maybe young people just coming to school and uh, here at Bible College and there's a lot of issues in your life, perhaps things you struggle with that no one else knows. You may be like Gideon, hiding, inactive, complaining, scared to death. God wants to give you something you don't have and like Gideon, he'll raise you up to win the battle in your life. Adults, young people, we look at the mamby-pamby, wishy-washy, mealy mouth stuff coming out of the mouths of preachers and leaders of my generation. I've been thinking about it recently. My generation, <clears throat> uh, the greatest generation, uh, fought wars and, 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 and lived through a depression and, uh, but my generation seems to be soft on everything. 
Uh, my generation and younger crying for socialism. My generation uh, wouldn't have the courage to defeat Hitler to save a country. And I'm afraid we wouldn't have the courage to defeat liberalism to save a church. God wants to give us something we don't have. God wants to give us something in our hearts that will make us stand when we need to stand. And um, that brings me to my next point. Uh, this Bible says not only should we um, do something, but it says stand for something. Verse 12, strengthen the feeble knees. Daniel continued praying even when they said he could not. He continued, he stood on his knees. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood on their feet. They wouldn't bow to the king. The king said, you bow or you fry. They wouldn't bow. They were thrown in the fire to fry, but they wouldn't burn. They wouldn't even, they wouldn't simmer. They wouldn't fry. They wouldn't burn. They didn't even smell of smoke. I mean, those three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were determined to stand for something. If you'll determine to stand for something, God the Holy Ghost will be there to help you to stand when you can't do the standing for yourself. Amen. Then thirdly, in this passage, I see, uh, I would encourage you to lead somewhere. The Bible says, make straight paths for your feet. You know, someone is watching you and someone is following you. I'm guessing that in this congregation is someone Someone who um, feels alone. Maybe you come to church alone. You leave alone. Nobody talks to you. Now that's your own fault. Because unless, you're, unless you uh, don't have a, the ability to speak, uh, you could talk to somebody yourself. You'd be shocked at how friendly the people are if you'd be friendly. <laughs> Amen. But... I know there's somebody here that likely feels alone. But I want to tell you, there's nobody here that lives to themselves. Somebody is watching you. Somebody is following you. A young father on Facebook recently posted that he was not leaving the church. Friends had left. Family had left. The whole in his church gone different directions. And he posted his testimony, I'm not leaving the church. And he gave his reasons why. Friends from church had left. Friends from Bible college had left. He gave his reasons why he wasn't leaving. Somebody let me know right away, you need to read this. They sent it to me. And I was blessed. And I know the guy. And I was real proud of him and am proud of him. My wife printed off all, all of this stuff. But what thrilled me was not just what he said. He said, me and my family, we're not leaving. What what impressed me was not just what he said. What impressed me and impressed my wife was the scores of comments to that guy's post. All kinds of young people and families uh, writing, thank you, we appreciate, this is such an encouragement. So encouraged that this young father had done the right thing. You know, one preacher said, courage is contagious. When one man takes a stand, the spines of others are stiffened. Joe Smith, uh, pastor in Shelbyville, Indiana, has preached from this pulpit. I've heard him with tears preach from this pulpit and other pulpits telling young people, uh, yes, God saved me after my rebellion, but in tears, he said, I can never get away from some of those friends that I influenced to hell. Perhaps that's why the Bible says God shall wipe away all tears. Some of those tears we may take to the grave and even take to heaven with us. Thank God he'll wipe away those tears. But young people in the dorm, in the classroom, in the neighborhood, you're influencing other people one way or the other way. Everything matters. Some of you think nothing of doing this or that. Maybe you can get by with it, but the kid that's following you may not. You can throw me out, throw me up, throw me down. This is, I'm not preaching against the rodeo, but 
I took my kid when he was young to the rodeo in Harrisburg at the farm show, the rodeo that's just at the end of the farm show. Jameson was very young. And I have to tell you, I love it. I love that. That's the neatest thing known to man, to watch those people about get killed by bulls. There's something terrible about, about it, but I do love to see it. I sat there listening to the blaring country and western music, and I sat there. It was all sponsored by, the, by a chewing tobacco company. Everything, you know, everything was all about chewing tobacco. And I saw my little boy sitting next to me. And I preached him a sermon that day. I said, Jameson, I'm bringing you here because this is fun. There's nothing wrong with good things and having fun. But if this would ever influence you, then Daddy would feel awful bad. And you know what? I never went back. Now, don't brag on me. Don't pat me on the shoulder. I'm not, you can go, whatever you want to do, no problem. That's not the point. But I never could go back. I don't want my feet to lead my boy in any way that he shouldn't go. I'm far from perfect. I may disappoint you here or there. I'm not living to please a person. That's not my point. We can get all bound up by each other, what this one can do and that one can do. That's not my point. What I am saying, I wish that we'd be very careful to make our paths straight for those who come behind. Some 400 thousand went west on the Oregon Trail. It was fur traders, trappers, and Christian missionaries who first cleared that trail. And then wagon train after wagon train, bringing families from the east to the west for a new start to share in the great American dream. You could count on that trail to lead you where you wanted to go, over 2,000 miles of wagon wheel ruts. The first wagon train was... Uh, 1836 or maybe even a little before this is 2019 and I've been to different places on that trail where the ruts are still carved clearly in the earth and I've stood on that path and I've thought of the stories of adventure that carved into those ruts in the trail so many years ago you want your life to count carve a trail deep in the surface of this life so those little children can follow that trail all the way home. You can't do it by yourself. You can't do something and stand for something and lead somewhere by yourself. But if you will follow peace with all men and holiness, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, you will, you will see the Lord. Let's stand together. Praise his name. Let's close with a chorus. I, I want every one of us to purpose in our heart to serve the Lord to the very best of our ability and be filled with his spirit. Amen. I'm thinking of 112. I will serve thee because I love thee. You have given life to me. 112 in the chorus book. I will serve because you have given life to
Shop. 5.30 tonight, let's gather for prayer. 6 o'clock, Youth and Children's Services. 6.30, Penview Praise Singers here. Look forward to seeing you tonight. The Lord bless you. You're dismissed.